Ham, baby. What a guy. Jerry, Jerry. Get me under a bar and let's make some pancakes, baby. Hey, hey, hey. Well, look at that thing, huh? Shine me up. And I'm not legally allowed to fight anybody. Welcome to the Carl Long Show with your host Carl Long and his socially long distance buddy, Paul Swan. On today's show, the prodigy, the most popular driver, and now, the champion, Chase Elliott is here, for one final time. Swan names things, and, RGs, you betcha, funny man Miles joins the show, and now, the Millie to your vanilla, Kyle Long and Paul Swan. Hey Paul, what's going on man? It's another episode, although it is our last episode, kind of sucks, but there's a lot of cool stuff to cover, like the fact that you and I have quietly behind the scenes becoming Chase Elliott fans the last couple of weeks, and now he's the cup champion, and he's on the Kyle Long Show today, and you know what, it's our last episode, I think we should inform the fans, it's now the Kyle Long and the Paul Swan Show, but first... <laughs> Time for the time machine. Let's take a trip back for an immediate reaction. Here's Kyle on the championships. We have a new champion. He's young as hell, much like fans in the NFL. We have stuff to look forward to for generations and generations because of these young talents in our leagues. So fired up and it was so awesome to see the old connect with the new Bill Elliott, Chase Elliott embracing. Looked like a lot of fun in Dawsonville, Georgia as well. Can't wait to talk about it, Paul. Yeah, man, the champ, you know, his dad was a champ. It's crazy, man. That's what NASCAR is all about, family. Father, son, you know, you know what it's like. Your dad was a Super Bowl champ. Your brother was a Super Bowl champ. So, you know, you've experienced that. Yeah. It's cool, man. That's what family's all about. I saw it firsthand, you know, at the Super Bowl when the, when the Falcons got beat by the Patriots. And it was one of those things where seeing my dad and my brother both having shared that experience – they were truly emotional. I rarely see those two in that light. And it was the same thing that I saw, I think, with Bill Elliott. You could see a guy truly wearing his heart on his sleeve. Chase Elliott is a NASCAR Cup Series champion. Ready to go, champ. Ah! Yes! Ah! We are now graced by the driver of the nine. Give a hoot and rise. The champ is here. Chase Elliott. Is the champ in the chat? Is he in the chat? The champ is here. We got, him. We got the champ, right, baby. Champ. How thanks are we doing? Coming. Thanks for coming on, bro. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Back, man. First and foremost, me and Paul would like to raise a toast to you and your team. Man, thank you. Um, and your sponsors and your family. Congratulations. And thank we're you. looking for an excuse to drink a beer. So uh, this is a good one. Perfect. I feel like I need to. Cheers to you, champ. Hey, thanks, buddy. I, I really think I might feel better if I just went ahead and started drinking again. So I might go get one here in a minute. The, the voice sounds fantastic right now. Sounds great. <sighs> Whatever I sound like now is about 10 times better than what I started sounding like when I started all this this morning. So it's, it's gotten better, but that's not saying much. So four hours of media, dude, that's like, that's a lot to sign up for. Have you kind of rethought winning? Have you been like, maybe I could have just drank last night and <laughs> not? Well, I'm going to be real honest with you. I feel like I got very lucky as it was because most of the time you got to go to New York. You know, you got to go to New York and do a big media tour. That's what everybody's been telling me. Hell, you got it made. So um, <laughs> I feel like it could have been a lot worse for sure. Another way you have it made is you figured out how to win a lot earlier than a lot of these old heads, man, because, you know, you, you've been taking notes since you were uh, knee high to a grasshopper, like they like to say, I'm sure, down there in Dawsonville, Georgia, which, by the way, looked like a hell of a time. The last, uh, the last couple hours, 24, 48. Man, it's been a party. It, it, it's been a party. I'm going to be real honest with you. It's been a party. I, I think I might have slept four hours since Sunday, but yes. um, it's been uh, it, it's been a blast. And, and yeah, Dawsonville was unreal. It was on the level last night. I mean, there's people everywhere. Like, there was some people that drove from like Kentucky and, and all these other states to come watch this parade yesterday. And I'm like, man, I wouldn't drive from my house to town to watch me do something so <laughs> i'm just like it's just nuts and you um, get when you're the most popular driver in nascar baby it's, it's crazy just enjoying it man you know you, you've won some big races you know those moments you just you wish you could pause time and oh yeah and soak them in and you can't it's like dang it's over you know yeah. i want to go back and live it again but you just gotta you gotta keep the party going all week baby as, as oh. long as you can 
it's going. Don't worry. <laughs> so would you say this has been the most stressful or the most fun week of your life? Because I know it's probably a combination of the two. You know, last week was so weird because – Martins, it was such a big win. He is going to win his way into the championship four. Elliott wins at Martinsville. Ah, let's go, boys. Let's go. And it was such a big win, but I felt like you couldn't really enjoy it because it was like, all right, you know, that's great, but now we really need to look ahead and get ready for for the biggest race of the year, biggest, biggest race of our lives. Um, so just last week, the vibe of it was very different. But the good news about it was I felt like our mindset was very much focused in how do we go fast again this weekend. We were on short, you know, a short turnaround, you know, not knowing we were going to be in and then being in and, and how you want to prepare from there. So, uh, yeah, we just had a great mindset and really felt like we enjoyed the moment these last two weeks better than we ever have before and performed when we had to. And um, it says a lot about our group. Yeah, I loved uh, – there was a post-race interview where you were talking about racing with your backs against the wall, and you guys don't do it often enough. And I was watching you do the interview, and I'm thinking to myself, this dude, like, understands the importance of the moment and is going to try to capitalize, and he thrives on it. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, who thrives in adverse situations, and he's versatile. You're a road course guy. You can dominate there. You're an oval guy. You can dominate there. And now you're a champion. And, I mean, has that – I mean, has it really, really <laughs> sank in for yeah. you? I think about a lot of stuff, you know, I, uh, that road to that first win was such a long and, and rocky road and, and just a lot of days that, man, I left the racetrack wanting to go crawl in a hole. I messed up so bad. But then I, I see things now and how things worked out. And I'm like, dang, like I know for a fact those tough days leaving racetracks helped shape and, and helped me deal with the last two weeks and be prepared and really focus on the things that matter. So it's kind of to, to kind of see it all come full circle. I get it, you know, and I'm glad I've learned all those lessons over the years. you got 11 wins now, one championship. It's got to, it's got to feel pretty easy now. Man, I, ain't nothing <laughs> easy. Nothing is easy, but it's just been, this year has just been nuts. I mean, you know, what, whether I was thinking about this and obviously, you know, I'm glad things worked out like they did, but you know, this year would have been an awesome year, whether Sunday had gone our way or not. I mean, one the all-star race, uh, had won four races. I mean, I just think about the season and I think there was a lot to be proud of there in itself. And then for this to happen, it's just like, holy, sh you know, now what? Um, yeah. no, it's, and, incredible, and it's just enjoy it. Yeah. That's awesome. It's got to feel extra special knowing that your dad won a championship back in 1988 and now you winning it. He was at the racetrack. Give us, Give us your feelings on having him there to celebrate with you. Yeah, I'm so happy they were there. I mean, winning a championship is one thing. To be able to experience that and live it with your parents is a whole other major uh, moment in time that a lot of people don't ever get to experience. So it was icing on the cake to have them there. Whatever you can share, give us the best thing you've done in the past two days so far, most fun, most wild. I don't know that I've done anything spectacular. I mean, I don't know how many beers I've drank in the past two days, but I'd say the number would have to be fairly – have to be fairly impressive. Based Basically on taking how, down a full keg by yourself. Based on how I feel right now, the number is probably higher than it should be. Uh, <laughs> What's the over-under, so, Paul? What's the over-under on beers drank by the time? Uh, I know myself, I'd be, I'd be about probably over 100 clams drinking right now. So I'm going to say – 100. Chase is, pro boy. Chase is probably – I'm going to give him over over 80 right now. Over 80? Man, I was, I'm I was not going to put him on the spot. I That's was a, thinking 40 maybe, 40, ooh, 50. I got you at a higher number than that. I got, I'll give you more respect in the drinking game than that. Oh, I appreciate it. I was slightly dehydrated after the race Sunday, so I had two or three, and I, I gave some of the best <laughs> interviews of my life. So, <laughs> so, so they know. <laughs> what the hell's on your to-do list? Like, do you want to play some Call of Duty uh, – they got the Cold War coming out, which would be pretty Oh, cool. damn right. I'm I'm going to game. Ooh, am I going to game soon. <laughs> and I'm excited about that. Uh, haven't been able to get on there with my boys the past couple of days. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna do some gaming for sure. I'm actually going to try to do some racing throughout the off offseason. Um, have, have some things in the works. And I've never – since I've been in Cup, I really haven't spent a winter racing. Um, so, I want to do some of that kind of still trying to iron out some details and how and what I'm going to do but I uh, would like to race some I'd love to get out west and get to Colorado and do some skiing at some point so I think it's going to be a pretty busy winter and I'm, I'm excited about it well 
you know what, Chase? You are the champ, and we I know we, we are on a time constraint, so we know you got to get the hell out of here. We appreciate you being here, and enjoy your offseason. We look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks yeah, for coming thanks, on, guys. Chase. Appreciate it. See you, Chase. See you, guys. Golf claps, please. It's time for viral videos of the week. Well, we all know what week it is. It's a little later in the year, but it is Masters week, baby. So what more appropriate than a little Tiger Woods? I mean, one of the kings of the Masters. Look at all those people in the background. You could hear a, you could hear a pin drop. The fact that this ball took 14 seconds from the, from the second. Sec- 14 oh. seconds it took to get oh. to the bottom of the cup. And you know what? It almost looks like it's at the end. Does it? It looks nah. like a commercial. Unbelievable, dude. Like, I you- love that one. Um, I got another Masters one because I'm stoked about the Masters, too. I played golf today. Very crappy round of golf. But here we've got footage of John Rahm getting a hole-in-one. Well, we don't see the shot, but we see him pulling the ball out of the cup. And Ricky Fowler's filming it, so we know it's legit. We know there's no tampering there. And I hear something incredible also happened while we were filming this show. Every year, the players, I think it's on the 16th or the 17th hole. It's a par three. Every year, they tee off, and they try to skip it across. And he got a hole-in-one. So he skipped it. It landed and rolled all the way. It was like a Tiger Woods iconic shot. That is one of the most incredible shots I've ever seen in my life. It might be the best hole-in-one ever. He's – dude, has that ever been done? I don't know, but my friend – Big Cat from Barstool said it looks like one of those old Powerade commercials where you just don't believe it. Yeah, where Michael Vick throws the ball out of the damn stadium. There's no way that is real. That's real. And they compete every year in the practice rounds. Uh, I'm not sure to the extent at which all the guys do it, but they try to skip it across that water. And uh, now they can study the teach tape of John Rahm doing it. Not in my wildest dreams. But the, the shitty part is there's no fans there to see it. But everybody on Twitter saw it. Well, that, and how do we know if it's real or not? They could all be in boots. Tune in next week for the Tin Foil Masters Highlights Gap segment. Don't I know? We now welcome Mr. Miles You Betcha. Where's he at? Where's he at? Oh my God, look at this beautiful beast. What's going on, guys? What's up? Oh, look at this guy. I love it, man. This is Midwest to a T. There we go. I like that. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Really good. I like that master's uh, visor you got going with the lettuce coming out the top. Buddy, high crown visor with the lettuce coming out the top. That's all I wear on the links. Kyle, I don't know. I don't see any lettuce coming out of the top of your hat, but uh... – <laughs> Oh, oh, what? <laughs> you know, what? They say it's, it's more aerodynamic so that when I'm in the Midwest visiting my Chicago friends, uh, I don't have to deal with the wind as much because it just kind of passes by me really that, quick. That is true. You don't got to worry about a bad hair day. <laughs> I haven't showered in weeks. That is another plus. Me either. That's great. So, Miles, you look like you'd fit in real well at a NASCAR race. I got to go to my first NASCAR race before COVID hit. Um, it was the Bush Clash at Daytona, Ugh. and it was, it was amazing. I was uh, kind of your classic, like, I get NASCAR, you know, it's whatever. But then I had to go to a race. I had to actually go to a race to figure out, like, how cool NASCAR really is. I actually got to wave the green flag at Daytona. Even if it's not the 500, I was like, this is so cool. I will never be able to do that again. Um, You know, I'm an internet guy. I I post a lot of videos on the internet. And so it's like fun and games when you're, like, in person – Hey, don't drop the flag. Don't drop the flag. And then I did drop the flag big time relief. And then I post a video on the internet and everyone is like, you just wave that flag. Like you are a big time, like wussy. Like that was the worst flag wave ever. And it just killed all of my like hype that I'm like, I just waved the green flag at Daytona posted online. They're like, you suck at waving a flag. And I was just like, I, okay. First of all, you know, like, I'm not a big heights guy either, and that – the stand is up there, okay? Yeah, right over the race cars. It's – so there I'm already like, okay, I'm up here. 
I got these cars coming at me. There's these, the people are wearing a full fire suit and helmets and they're like, you know, this, I'm going to tap you when to wave it and this and that. And on all I can think about is like, I just, I cannot drop the flag. So I'm white knuckling this flag as much as I can. And, uh, and then you saw how stiff I was when I waved it. So <laughs> what, well, and, and Paul, you, so you're, you're a pit crew guy. Yeah, I pit for what? the three car, Austin Dillon. Yep. And, uh, I've been at Richard Childress racing for my whole career. So, so what is your, what is your actual position? I am the tire carrier. I slang and bang ru rubber all day long. This guy throws uh, around heavy ass tires like it's donuts. Like I, I love that. So I, I, again, going and having a hot pass and having like a guide tell us all about the kind of NASCAR experience. You guys are animals. Like they're, they're talking about how like you guys are on this workout regimen and you got a nutritionist and all this other stuff and making sure you're in tip top shape. Paul will have a race on Sunday and he's in the gym Monday morning at 7 a.m. texting me like, clang and bang, bro. I'm like, you're <laughs> such a friggin' meathead, dude. <laughs> just took, I just took 315 for a ride on the squat this morning, baby. Load it up. <sighs> we got to get you down here and get you working out, baby. The only, the only squatting I do is squat down to pick up my 30 rack of bush light. <laughs> Love that. Cut a hole in the ice, squat a little bit, sorority yeah. squat to get down there. <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah, that, that, that's actually a good question. Talking about cutting ice, I, I got a I got a good question for you. We we do a Would You Rather on our show, one of our favorite games. So, here's my Would You Rather. Would you rather be stranded in an ice shanty with an endless supply of bush lattes, or would you rather be stranded on a deserted beach with a bunch of beautiful women, but you can only drink white claws, which I call white clams. I, I, you gotta go the ice shanty, man. I mean, I, I don't grow this, I don't grow this beard to, to, to sit on a beach all day. You know, you got, and what people don't realize is that if you're out on the ice, your beer is always going to be cold as well. Oh. You set that thing right on the ice. You're good to go. Um, do I, I mean, do I get to fish while I'm in there? Is, no, do I get all, yeah. You can fish either place, but the, the, the temperature <laughs> of the beer that you brought up is a tremendous point. Well, Miles, we appreciate you coming on today, brother. Thanks for taking the time. It's been fun. You make me proud to be a Midwestern guy, definitely. Well, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Um, last NASCAR thing, tough that my boy Kevin Harvick couldn't pull it out this year. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to next year, and hopefully he can get to a race for sure. Oh, Thanks absolutely. for having me on, guys. Absolutely, bro. Thanks again. It's now time for... Swan names things. Donnie, Ronnie, Johnny, Lonnie, Bonnie, Terry, Dopey, Mopey, Sleepy, <laughs> Weak. <laughs> Tickets, please. Kyle and Paul now read your comments from YouTube. Paul, we asked some folks on the internet where they would like to do a burnout ideally. And our first guy, Paulie, says he wants to do it in front of Denny Hamlin's house. Tell us about Timmy. Timmy. Timothy Riverhead Raceway, his home track. Well, I'm sure if you win there, my guy, you can, uh, you can do all the burnouts you want. Every rival to my school, that makes sense. Somebody else says the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Jake, I agree with you, Fenway Park. That sounds like an awesome burnout. I love, I love that. Oh, there's so many options. What do you think, Paul? Well, I'm sure we're both going to say the same thing, but I got to go White House. I mean, do some burnouts, baby. Do some burnouts in that front lawn. Get the people going. Yeah, I think that would be sick. I don't know if I do it inside the, uh, the fence or outside the fence on the street. I might want to shut down traffic a bit for a while and just do a little smoke screen with my... So I'm also thinking uh, maybe like someplace cool... Somewhere in Los Angeles, I don't know, maybe on the Strip. You guys have done that before. I've seen the guys do that. Uh, so, yeah, probably the, the, the Vegas Strip for me. Oh, Paul, it's they sad. Know. We're now we're now doing our final close for the final episode of the Kyle Long Show. It has been so much fun doing this every week. We've gotten to know one another. We didn't know who each other were before the season, and now it's like I can't wait to have a beer with you. I'm looking forward to – everything kind of settling down in the world uh, in terms of 
the pandemic and we can go hang out and meet one another in person. But, you know, I feel like it's, uh, I have not been catfished and nor have you. So we're looking forward to it. Can't wait, buddy. You're a real human. So am I. And I think we got a lot of great times ahead. Hey, and for all the fans out there who have tuned in every week and have left feedback and have been interactive, we appreciate you so much. It's been so much fun to follow along with the NASCAR season. Uh, we even had the champion on today, so we hope you enjoyed that. And until next time, you guys just follow along with us on social media and enjoy your off season. Be careful. Have fun. Stay safe out there. Peace. Want free beer? Go to the brewery. Now get out of here before I put you two in a bottle. That's our show. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out past episodes and other beauty videos. Till then, wear a mask and see you in the funny papers. AD or BC? Yeah, was that? <laughs> Is that when dinosaurs were still going? <laughs> Sometimes I ask him, do you think you drink a little too much beer? And he says, I just win a lot, so uh, we celebrate. Beer's running down my eye. Uh, <laughs> you and me are going to be hitting the Iron Paradise every day like Dwayne the Rock Johnson, baby. Dwayne couldn't handle it. We were in the together.